this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Dell Piano. No, not really. This is an unusual product, though. This is the Dell Inspiron 17 7000 series. The Inspiron 7000 series is the best. They have the 3, 5, and 7000 series, each going up in price and quality. And the 7000 series are all 2-in-1. So even this 17-inch ultrabook sort of thing, because it's slim, it has ultrabook dual-core dual CPUs, so you can sort of call it an ultrabook, is a two-in-one. So uh, if you think that's crazy, well, here's an example right here. Piano, bigger is better. It's more natural. Uh, and all those fun things that all-in-ones tout, you know, playing games with the family, doing scrapbooking, you know, there, there's a lot of actual good uses for this. So I'm not going to spend the whole video making fun of this gargantuan 17.3 inch, 6.2 pound convertible because there are uses for it. And well, Dell has a size to everybody. We're gonna look at it now. The Inspiron 17 2-in-1 is available with Intel Core i5 and i7 dual core ULV Ultrabook CPUs. Those are the 15 watt ones. The Core i5-6200U, the Core i7-6500U. So this is as powerful as any Ultrabook on the market. This is not a quad core killer multimedia and gaming laptop. But the upside is you're going to get a lot better battery life with it too. And it's thinner and it's lighter. You have the same aluminum casing here as you do on the 13 inch Inspiron 7000 we recently reviewed. It's a good looking machine and 6.2 pounds, 2.77 kilograms. It's not very heavy for a 17 inch laptop. It's less than an inch thick, 0.89 inches which is something like 22.6 millimeters. Full-size keyboard, you get a number pad, nice trackpad here too. And of course it does the two-in-one thing. You have your tent mode, you have your presentation mode, you can even use it in tablet mode. There is no pen support. And you can see how much bigger it is in the 13 inch there too. This model comes with NVIDIA 940MX graphics. That's low-end dedicated graphics, but it's enough to give you a little extra oomph, you know, when you're gaming, say, playing Tropico or Civ 5. Nothing that really is very graphically demanding. It's not a gaming laptop per se, folks. It does have a Windows Hello camera for facial recognition login. It's an infrared camera, and it also has a regular 720p webcam of pretty mediocre quality. So why would you want a 17-inch convertible? Well, there are reasons. I mean, it's great for watching movies, and it does have a nice screen. It's great for editing photos. And obviously here, you know, family multiplayer gaming. We've got some air hockey going on there. And for those of you who like to use virtual music instruments via the keyboard that we're going to show you here, or virtual strings, DJing stuff, you know, oh, it's a lot of fun actually on a big screen. Now for something that's supposed to be your big time multimedia machine, a good screen is important. And this one does better than the 13 inch Inspiron that we recently reviewed. It's still full HD, 1920 by 1080. And that's perfectly reasonable. This looks pretty sharp here. You can see detail, right? But brightness is better on this. We have 335 nits of brightness, and that's pretty darn bright. It's good enough to even combat glare. I mean, you know, you're not gonna use it outdoors at the beach or something like that, but indoors, it's gonna look pretty rock and zingy. Color gamut is also better. It's almost up there with the competition in this price range, at least for Ultrabooks, where they tend to have almost full sRGB coverage and 75% of Adobe RGB. This one hits 73% of sRGB and 72% of Adobe RGB. Close enough. That means not only do movies and photos look pretty, but it's good enough for accurate photo editing, which is something you just might want with a big screen here, and also video editing too, of course, where color accuracy counts. Gamma's a little low at 2.0. Black levels are good at 0.5, so you get a 670 to 1 overall contrast ratio. That's respectable enough. The white point's a little bit high at 7300 Kelvin, but you know, laptops do tend to be high, and it's not insanely high, so we're okay with that. So overall, thumbs up for this display here. And this photo that I shot taken at twilight has a lot of color saturation and a lot of dynamic range, and it's showing up pretty well here. Plenty of room for a keyboard here, obviously, and you've got a number pad as well. Given the amount of space that they had and the fact that there are no speakers flanking on the sides over here, I would have liked if they gave you a little separation between the number pad and the regular section of the keyboard, but not the end of the world. It's backlit in white. It's very tactile. It's not loose or clacky. It's nice, except for the fact travel is a little bit 
short, 1.3 millimeters, 17 inch laptop. I mean, yes, it is a thin one, but usually big laptops have room for lots of key travel. I wish Dell had found a way to give us a little bit more. It's, you know, it's up to you. If you're used to using Ultrabooks with low key travel, which seems to be all Dell wants to do all day, all night these days, well, then it'll be okay for you. Trackpad is a precision trackpad, and I like it a lot. It's centered underneath the space bar, which is pretty typical. Nice texture, just a little bit of drag right there, and the clicky button is just right. Not too, too easy and not too stiff. Our 13-inch one had a very stiff clicker on it. The fit and finish on this is actually quite nice. We have the contrasting kind of yeah, chromey polished stainless steel, whatever you want to call it here. It's nice. It's stiff. There's no flex on it. It feels pretty sturdy. If you really push on the lid, you'll get a little bit of movement. But for a 17-inch laptop, you're talking a big expanse. So that's not unusual to get a teeny bit of flex there. It's a nice looking product as it should be. Ports, well, I'm not too impressed. For a 17-inch laptop, there's room for lots of ports and some competitors do give you an awful lot more. This actually mirrors the Inspiron 13 7000 we just reviewed, the two-in-one model. Same ports, same placement. They didn't add any more. So you have your volume and your power button right there. Of course, there's keyboard volume controls as well, but that's just in case you are using it as a giant tablet or something like that. We don't have access to the keyboard. We've got our full-size SD card slot here, the USB 2.0 port. Once again, I'm going to say, why is that a thing anymore? It should just be USB 3.0. And that's your lock slot. And there's where your power plug plugs in there. And it's a 65 watt compact charger, a little bit higher than the usual 45 watt for Ultrabooks because, well, we have the NVIDIA 940MX graphics there. USB-C 3.1, yay! So you can use USB-C peripherals. And there are dongle adapters now available for things like DisplayPort if you need it, Ethernet. It's versatile. There's Dell's USB-C dock. This is not Thunderbolt 3 as well. Sorry, you have to look to the XPS 15 for that if you can manage to live with only 15 inches of size. Full-size HDMI 1.4 right there. And there's our USB 3.0 port. And of course, your combo mic headphone jack. Inside we have dual band Wi-Fi H11 AC. Now this is Intel's lower end card, the 3165. So not as fast range and throughput as you'd get with the 8260 card used in Dell's higher end XPS line. Experientially, it actually it worked pretty darn well. You can stream Netflix with this, play some online games, that sort of thing. Speaking of gaming, the 940MX as a second generation Kepler video card in here, switchable with Intel HD 520 graphics, so it can automatically switch when it's needed, it'll turn on. That's pretty low end graphics. It's only going to give you a little bit extra oomph. If you're playing casual games, if you're playing older games, it'll help. It'll give you a little bit of boost in Photoshop and Adobe Premiere Pro. But this is not really a gaming laptop. This is really about being thin and light, pretty, multimedia with long battery life. The bottom is aluminum too, and it picks up a little bit of fingerprints, which you can actually see on this. And the lid really doesn't. If you want to take the bottom cover off, it's Phillips head screws. Wherever you see them, you unscrew them. There's none that are hidden. And some plastic clips hold it on or on the side there. It's not too hard to pry it off. And then you have access to some very expandable internals. There's an M.2 SSD slot. It comes with a SATA 3 SSD in our configuration. Don't believe it supports PCIe, though they may be using the same motherboard for that high-end option that does offer that. Two and a half inch drive bay, and you've got two DDR4 RAM slots. Yes, nice right there. And the Wi-Fi card is socketed, and that's good because you actually might want to upgrade that card in the future since it's not mm, the chis and crackers let's say, of Wi-Fi cards. It's okay. Your stereo speakers right here is where the vents are. And boy, they're loud, which you would expect. 17-inch multimedia-oriented machines should have really nice full loudspeakers, and this does. And we've got adequate ventilation here and along the back edge as well. Because this is a 15 watt dual core CPU. This is not a quad core powerhouse. It doesn't really get that hot. It doesn't get that noisy. And you got a big chassis here to dissipate heat as well. So really not much of an issue here. This is not about killer, killer CPU and GPU so much as just being a competent multimedia and watch your movies on, have some fun, edit your photos kind of machine. So the base configuration that's 899 right now comes with a core i5, 8 gigs of RAM, and a 1 terabyte hard drive. No matter what, you're going to get that NVIDIA 940MX graphics and always the 1920 by 1080 touchscreen, which, by the way, does not support a pen. 
it seems to actually have a Synaptics digitizer because it, it reacts, but in all the wrong ways, to the old Denel, Dell Synaptics pen. That is, it kind of jumps in and clicks happen about several inches away, so you don't want to use it. It's just, obviously, Dell decided not to officially support it. But anyway, our model is list price eleven forty nine. You'll probably find it for less at Best Buy or with Dell coupons. And that one's pretty nicely configured towards the high end. That gets you a, the Core i7, 16 gigs of RAM, a 128-gig M.2 SSD. That's what we have right here. It's SATA 3 interface, so you're not going to see crazy high PCIe numbers like in the Dell XPS 15. And it has a 1 terabyte 5400 RPM hard drive as well. So decent numbers there for that kind of SSD. Certainly it's a lot faster than a hard drive is going to be, and that's the drive where Windows installed on on that SSD. So it's going to mean fast boot times, and as much as you can, install your programs on there, and they'll launch quickly too. PC Mark Home Accelerated, you can see the score there, 3382, par for the course for what is essentially a giant ultrabook. And again, Geekbench 3, single and multi-core scores there, the 64-bit test, just like every other ultrabook with a Core i7 on the market currently. Now, how about a little 3D testing? This is where the 940MX helps a little bit. That score of 1874 in Firestrike is about twice as fast as Intel HD 520 integrated graphics. So it does offer a boost there. Now, it's, it pales in comparison even to the NVIDIA GTX 960M that's in the Dell XPS 15, or, of course, higher-end GPUs. This is not a killer gaming laptop. You're not going to be playing... Battlefield 4 on high settings, full resolution, that sort of thing. But yeah, older games, sure, it's going to give a nice little bump to make Skyrim and Bioshock Infinite more playable. Granted, you're, you're going to have it probably still set on low to, at best, medium settings there, but better than nothing, ain't it? And so you can see what the screen looks like actually watching a video. And here are the speakers. Let's go ahead and play this video. I mean, that's pretty robustly built, upgradable, and has good internals. $750. We have the base model here, and this is a 13... That's pretty darn nice. That's at 84% volume right there. It's pretty rich. It's pretty full. It sounds kind of like me. And boy, what a big screen for watching videos on. So, you got a big screen here. You got... Um, Core i7, that's what we have in our unit, but still it's a dual core, low power CPU. What does that mean for battery life? It means actually pretty good things because there's room for a bigger battery in here. It has a 56 watt hour battery, which is on the large side for this kind of CPU. And granted, it's driving a larger display, but it is a full HD display and not quad HD or 4K or something like that. That's not even an option here. Battery life is actually pretty good on this. And Dell claims about up to eight hours or so, and we're seeing about seven hours of battery life. So for a laptop this big, that's actually kind of unusual. Usually the giant laptops, because they tend to be the, the big power consumer quad-core laptops with high-end dedicated graphics, usually run times are not such a good thing. So for those of you who really don't need all that super com computing power, but you do care about things like slimness, portability, and pretty decent battery life, well, this is it. So that's the Dell Inspiron 17 7000, specifically the 7778 model for 2016. And, you know, for around a grand, you get a pretty nice, la nice laptop. If you were looking for an Ultrabook, but, you know, 15 inches even seems a little small for the things you want to do. Maybe your eyesight site's not so great. Maybe you want to watch Netflix on a, you know, there's many reasons to want a bigger screen. This is pretty darn nice. you got nice fit and finish, nice materials, a decent keyboard, key travel is low, nice trackpad, very pleasing display, which is important for something that's probably going to be used for multimedia, family, gaming, and that sort of thing. And speaking of gaming, you do have low-end dedicated graphics in here, just enough to give it a little push so things like Tropico 5 and Civ 5 run a little bit nicer. Of course, in the same price range, there are entry-level gaming laptops, typically in the 15-inch size, sometimes in the 17. So it really depends what you're looking for. If, if gaming, serious PC gaming is your thing, this won't be for you. But as a all-around multimedia kind of device, something the family can use, then this makes a lot of sense. It'll get better battery life, too. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos.